America, land of invention. Hot dogs, jazz, the elevator, skyscrapers. This is the story of the greatest innovation of all, the modern vertical city. One world famous icon has come to symbolize it. Amazingly, we very nearly didn't have it. It's 1885, and New York City has a big problem. A magnificent gift, but with some assembly required. Scattered across Bedloe's Island in New York Harbor in 214 crates. They contain the largest statue in the Western world. It's been donated by the people of France to celebrate the centenary of the Declaration of Independence. Built in Paris, broken down into 350 massive pieces for the journey to America. That's the problem. The cost of reassembling it will be astronomical. Money New York does not have. At least six other U.S. cities are jockeying to give it a home. New York City is in danger of losing the Statue of Liberty. Not if this man can help it. Joseph Pulitzer, tenacious newspaper magnate, immigrant, self-made man. He owns the biggest paper in the U.S., the New York World and he's determined to keep liberty in New York Harbor. Through his chain of newspapers, Pulitzer launches the biggest fundraising campaign ever seen in North America. It would be an irrevocable disgrace to New York City and the American Republic to have France send us this splendid gift without our having provided even so much as a landing place for it. We must raise the money. More than a million people read Pulitzer's papers every day. Enclosed, please find 25 cents as my One contribution dollar, to the contents the of our little savings bank, which we cheer to the resolved to send you the contents of the first jackpot. You will find enclosed four dollars. The money we saved to go to the circus with. Donations flood in from all across the country, rich and poor, east and west, pennies and nickels fives and tens, even thousands of dollars. In all, a staggering 121,000 donations. More than enough to keep this iconic statue in New York. I think a statue is not just a statue. I think symbols really matter. I think they signify in a big way. In fact, Maybe they do more than reams and reams and reams of legislation and paper and print. Now the real work begins. To hold a statue 150 feet high, the pedestal will be the biggest concrete structure in the world. Over 200 men work through a grueling winter to complete it. As the last of the cement dries, workers toss in their own silver dollars for good luck. Next, Liberty's enormous iron skeleton. It's designed by Gustave Eiffel, who will build the famous Eiffel Tower in Paris. The skeleton is 151 feet tall, and with the pedestal, it's the height of a 30-story office block.
Now for the outer layer. Wrapping around the skeleton are 60,000 pounds of hand-sculpted copper. The sandal is 32 times bigger than a human foot, the equivalent of a size 879 shoe. It's on-the-job training, often at 300 feet in the air. It's as difficult as it is dangerous. They need to fix 300 pieces of copper shell to the framework with more than 300,000 rivets. Her robes have over 4,000 square yards of copper. Her outstretched arm is 42 feet long. A fingernail weighs three and a half pounds. The scale of liberty is unimaginable. After six months of hazardous construction, there are no fatalities, and Liberty's 17-foot face is finally winched into position. It's bigger than Lincoln's on Mount Rushmore. It said the sculptor, Frederick August Bartholdi, modeled the face on his own mother. It takes 25 years for Liberty to oxidize and turn green. A functioning lighthouse until 1902, the statue's official name is Liberty, enlightening the world. At first, a symbol of the alliance and friendship between France and the 13 colonies in the American Revolution, it will come to represent much more. At the entrance to New York Harbor, the Statue of Liberty becomes a beacon to the world and a welcome to millions. Later, a poem by Emma Lazarus in her base celebrates America as a land of refugees. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me, I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Over the next two decades, more than 12 million immigrants pass the Statue of Liberty on their way to Ellis Island, the first stop for most new Americans. Imagine what it took for someone to leave eastern Poland or Lithuania or some village in the mountains of northern Italy and come all the way to this strange place with nothing. Today, more than 100 million Americans can trace their roots back to ancestors who came through Ellis Island. And from Ellis Island, they spread out across the continent. For the most part, Irish, Russians, and Italians to big cities, Germans to the Midwest, Scandinavians to farmland. At the dawn of the 20th century, eventually, there will be more Italians in New York than in Rome. 
From 1880 to 1930, nearly 24 million new immigrants arrive in the U.S. A new era in U.S. history is about to begin.